Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, June 12th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Neptune, New Jersey. Microsoft's Patch Tuesday, of course, is at the top of the news today. 88 total vulnerabilities being patched. Most of the critical vulnerabilities are located in the browser or the scripting engine, which of course is sort of part of the browser. Some interesting critical vulnerabilities outside of uh, these browser vulnerabilities. The Microsoft Speech API has a remote code execution vulnerability. Now in order to trigger this, you would have to convince a victim to actually try to convert a piece of text that you send them to speech using that API. In addition, we also have uh, three critical vulnerabilities in Windows Hyper-V. These are remote code execution vulnerabilities. Now, and then we also do have four privilege escalation vulnerabilities that are rated important that already have been disclosed. I believe these are essentially these vulnerabilities disclosed by Sandbox Escaper over the last couple of weeks. Now, and as usual, we also got updates from Adobe. One remote code execution vulnerability is patched in Flash Player. Probably at least as important are three code execution vulnerabilities in cold fusion so don't forget to patch this we have seen this often being exploited in the past and then we also have a couple of vulnerabilities being addressed in adobe campaign classic well i don't think that tool is particularly that often used it's a business marketing tool but if you use it well definitely do pay attention to it so in general from the adobe and microsoft side i would call this an overall average patch Tuesday. And this month, Intel and SAP also joined the patching fund. Nothing really all that terribly noteworthy from Intel, a number of firmware updates and the like. As far as SAP is concerned, uh, one of the vulnerabilities that they're addressing here, and they released a total of 11 security notes, does imply some kind of cross-site scripting vulnerability, I believe, that could be used to obtain admin privileges. Now, then with respect to Microsoft, in addition to the patch Tuesday, we also got details regarding a denial of service vulnerability in how Microsoft Windows processes certificates. And apparently Microsoft planned on addressing this issue today as part of its patch Tuesday, but then decided not to release the respective patch. Now, this is a denial of service vulnerability if Windows processes a particular malformed certificate, it will essentially lock up the system. Google did release details since it's now beyond its usual 90-day reporting deadline. And as part of uh, this post, did also release a proof of concept certificate that can be used to trigger this vulnerability. And apparently a few hundred regional aircrafts in the United States had issues this weekend, the last couple days, with their GPS receivers. This particular GPS receiver made by Collins Aerospace, the GPS 4000 is used to feed data to the ADS-B transmitter of these aircrafts that will broadcast the aircraft's uh, position. Initially, a large number of flights had to be canceled due to this problem. It wasn't really clear if it was actually sort of a GPS system issue, but turns out GPS uh, is fine. It's just a bug in this particular receiver. Collins Aerospace and the FAA have released statements uh, by now. The FAA did allow planes with defective receivers to actually still fly uh, with some restrictions. And then we got yet another version of the Rowhammer attack. Now, classic Rowhammer, as it was originally discovered by Google researchers, essentially allows you to flip bits in memory that you shouldn't have access to by frequently flipping adjacent bits. This new attack, dubbed Ramplead, actually 
does it a little bit different. It allows you to read bits in memory that you aren't supposed to have access to and has been demonstrated to be usable to, for example, extract secret SSH keys. A demonstration of the attack with DDR3 memory showed that it's possible to read bits from memory at a rate of about 0.3 bits per second with an accuracy of 82%, which is sufficient to then reconstruct partially retrieved RSA keys. This attack appears to be also workable with uh, error correcting memory and according to the researchers it should also work with DDR4 memory even though it hasn't really been tested with that type of memory yet. As far as protections go, one possible way is to use encrypted memory. Now this is available for example in the form of the trusted execution feature on Intel chips or the trust zone from ARM. AMD also has the secure encrypted virtualization feature that essentially also could prevent this particular attack. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.